with live coverage of the inauguration of Barack Obama. We're catching up with Kentuckians. It's Magna Carta material. He's Kentucky's only entrant in Barack Obama's inaugural parade. And we've met several people from Kentucky. This is the place to be on the planet. They know this is a once in a lifetime event. You couldn't give me a million dollars not to do this. Obama! Students and teachers from the small school in Franklin County. From Woodford County, Scott County. I remember watching uh, the March on Washington and all that when I was a little girl. Live this morning in our nation's capital. As the president's motorcade went by, the more than 50 Lexington officers. The Beatties had tickets to the actual swearing in. Through the eyes of Kentuckians. With coverage you can count on, this is LEX 18 News at 1230. With live coverage of the inauguration of Barack Obama. Excitement in Washington, D.C. as thousands of Kentuckians head to a historic inauguration. We're live in D.C. with today's LEX 18 Big Story at 1230. Good afternoon. I'm Chris Goodman. Dia Davidson is off today. Many Kentuckians having a great time in Washington, D.C. as we move closer to tomorrow's inauguration of President-elect Barack Obama. Nancy Cox and Nicole Pence are both live in Washington, D.C. with the latest. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chris. Good afternoon to everyone back home. LEX 18 has sort of set up camp here on the National Mall with, oh, about 100,000 of our closest <laughs> yeah. friends. We wish you could be here as well. No formal events going on right now here, but that doesn't mean there's not a lot to do. Right. Yesterday, there was a huge concert that actually took place this way on the mall near the Lincoln Memorial. Tons of teenagers, tons of families there, and it was very high energy, and that's really the case that's carried over to today. No question. A lot of people made great sacrifices to make it to that concert, including some Lafayette High School students who traveled all night Saturday in order to make it to that inaugural concert. We caught up with them today. In fact, Lafayette sent quite a large group of kids here. They're in a club that studies how government works. Well, they're getting a real life lesson in that. They're touring the museum, seeing the sights, and witnessing the peaceful transfer of power, something uniquely American. I'm so, you know, it just, the change that's happening, the, the vibe that's going on in D.C. and all around the nation, you know, people are helping people that they don't even know. And, you know, I just think it's awesome just to see that change in people. I want to meet Obama because like, he's just great. I just want to meet him. Give me your uh, hello call to him to get his attention. When you get Obama! Hey! Hey! <laughs> I think it might work. <laughs> No shortage of enthusiasm from those kids. And I think they really understand that this is something very special that they'll never forget. Nicole, you caught it with some older students. I did, and those UK students said, you know, it really is a sacrifice that they had to make to actually get here to Washington to see monetary sacrifice, also just the physical travel, but they all said it was well worth it. They aren't scared of the extra security. They aren't bothered by the millions of people. And they say they don't mind being heckled nearly every minute to buy anything with Barack Obama's face on it. Got some scarves right here, some Barack Obama bags, some handbags, some watches, some buttons. Got a little bobblehead, a little bobblehead pin right here you can pin on your shirts. That's because these Kentuckians say there's no place they'd rather be. The buzz in this town right now is just, it's fabulous. It's just neat to be here. Crowd estimates say between 2 million and 4 million people could flood the National Mall this week to watch Barack Obama become our country's 44th president. We're going to be in the general public area, like getting here at 4 in the morning so we can get as close as we possibly can while still being really far away. UK students Sabrina Hunchell says she made it a priority to save up the money to come to Washington. I wanted to come here to be part of history. Like I am a photojournalist, so like I always heard stories about like Martin, like Martin Luther King being here and like seeing all the people out there and like you know none of them could actually see him, but like just being here and being a part of it, I wanted to be a part of that. And of course, what would a trip to the most popular place on the earth right now be without celebrity sightings? I totally got to see Anderson Cooper, and I am a huge fan. 
And you are looking at a live look of our nation's capital. Will Barack Obama will be sworn in as president tomorrow. As you can see, the crowds are just huge. And so you can imagine that this is Monday. Tomorrow, when the inauguration actually happens, it's going to be full of people. We're told that people will actually be here as early as 4 in the morning to I get a spot it. here on the mall to see everything. It's going to be amazing. It will be amazing, and you will see it all right here on LEX 18 News. For now, though, for Nicole Pence, I'm Nancy Cox. We're covering the news live in Washington, D.C from the LEX 18 mobile newsroom. Back to you. And we will have more live coverage from Washington, D.C. coming up on LEX 18 News at 5. And the Kentucky Ball is just about the only inaugural ball that is sold out. 1,400 people expected. Imagine throwing a party for that many people. I can't wait to be there, Nancy. <laughs> and actually, earlier today, we, we've mentioned the word energetic, and we met up with one of the most energetic groups. And I know that's a bold statement, but they were a bunch of students from Frankfurt High School in Franklin County. I met them on the Capitol steps, and they had just gotten off the tour bus, and boy, were they excited to be here in Washington, D.C. To think this trip for these Frankfurt High School students almost didn't happen. It got cut, and we fought to have them reconsider because what they were going to do is turn it into like a spring break for seniors or something. And, and we said, no, we this is what we want to do, and especially when Obama won. Nearly 230 students and teachers from the small school in Franklin County traveled overnight to make it to Washington this morning. Their first stop, a visit with Congressman Ben Chandler. It's really just a big school tradition for us. I mean, this is like, you know, it's really a lot of history in the making, you know, our first African-American president. So, you know, it's kind of something that you want to be here to say that you didn't see it on TV, but you're like here firsthand, like I know where I was when it happened. It's a tradition hardly any other high school can claim. The school sent students to every inauguration since 1992. Well, I think it's really a great opportunity. It's a small high school, so they can do some things that maybe some of the bigger schools can't do. And it's a monumental event, and it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience for these kids. And with them coming every four years, then each class gets to come once during their high school career. I think it's amazing that our school gets to come here, and we're from little Frankfurt. A lot of fundraisers and support from one student and her senior project helped make this fun possible. I'm kind of excited because, like, it's, he's the first African American president, and it's just a great honor to be here and to stand in front of the Capitol with all like my peers. Now, the group doesn't have tickets to the actual inauguration, but they plan to be up early and out here on the mall with the other <laughs> two million people that will be out here. And all the students said they're really excited about it. Oh, they should be. This is history in the making. Well, stick around. We have so much more coming up on LEX 18 News. We'll continue to preview the Kentucky ball and tell you why it was so important to Muhammad Ali that he be here tonight. We are covering the news live from Washington, D.C., from the LEX 18 Mobile Newsroom. Back to you. With coverage you can count on, this is LEX 18 News at 11. With live coverage of the inauguration of Barack Obama. In a matter of hours, we'll witness history in the making as Barack Obama is officially sworn in as our next president. We're live at our nation's capital for the countdown, and that's tonight's LEX 18 Big Story at 11. Good evening and thanks for joining us at 11. I'm Kevin Christopher. We're just over 12 hours away from the inauguration of Barack Obama and thousands of people from all across the country have converged on our nation's capital for tomorrow's historic ceremony. LEX 18's Nancy Cox joins us live from Washington, D.C. with a look at how Kentuckians are enjoying this special time. Nancy. Good evening. In just a few hours, Barack Obama will become president of the United States. The media coverage for this event is unprecedented. The crowd is expected to set a record, and even the celebrations are huge as well. One of the premier events kicked off tonight, the Bluegrass Ball, and Nicole Pence takes us to one of the biggest parties in town. It's a tradition the night before every inauguration for each state to hold their own formal celebration. Well, here is Kentucky's inaugural Bluegrass Ball. The ball was held at the very posh Marriott Wardman in D.C. Hundreds of elected officials, donors, former Kentuckians, and people who still live in the bluegrass attended the big party. And, of course, a big party like this wouldn't be complete without Kentucky celebrities. And in the midst of the crowd is this woman, Lexingtonian Sarah Boyd. 
a former UK student who calls herself a political junkie. Boyd spent all day touring the monuments before dressing up tonight for the big ball. She tells us she was starstruck when she met the Bluegrass Ball's birthday boy, Mr. Muhammad Ali. I mean, it's such a Kentucky icon, um, and especially I feel like with all like the racial issues that coming up with Obama, you know, being the first black president, I just feel like it's even more monumental to meet him today, to be honest. Muhammad Ali celebrated his 67th birthday here tonight with all the Kentuckians singing a round of happy birthday, and you can bet our friend Sarah Boyd sang along. We are covering the news in Washington, D.C. from the LEX 18 mobile newsroom. Back to you. Well, you know, I must have drawn the short straw. I didn't get to attend that swanky affair. But let me tell you, not every good party requires black tie and tails. Tonight, I got to party with some real people. You don't need a fancy party to celebrate on this eve of the inauguration. Fight us, everybody, fight us. On the National Mall, folks threw their own party. We tried to go to the Kennedy Center tonight. And Marsha Williams of Lexington was right in the middle of it. It was all worth it. His history, and I wouldn't want to be any other place. What are you going to tell your grandchildren about this? I'm just going to tell them that their Nana was here, and this is an awesome opportunity, and they're just going to hear everything about this. It's cold, but it's worth it. Marsha got plenty of souvenirs for those grandkids. She's in D.C. with her friend Ray Coleman. I didn't think I would see this in my lifetime. Who works at Ashland Elementary. She can't wait to share her stories of the Obama inauguration. I remember watching uh, the March on Washington and all that when I was a little girl. And now I want to be here to experience this for myself. One thing that we feel is just not, you know, that uh, Barack Obama is an African American. He's just not our president. But you get that feeling he's everybody's president. We expect people to stake out their positions here on the National Mall very early. Some folks told us they're headed down as early as 4 a.m. to get ready for the big day. It's almost here. We're covering the news live from Washington, D.C. from the LEX 18 mobile newsroom. Back to you. Later this morning, we'll all witness history in the making as Barack Obama is sworn in as the nation's 44th president. Nancy Cox and Nicole Pence both been live all this weekend from uh, the nation's capital, D.C., as we count down the anticipated moments to this morning's inauguration. Nicole Pence, good morning to you. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Dia. You are looking at a live view of the U.S. Capitol this morning on Inauguration Day, where Barack Obama will officially become the 44th president of the United States. And I have to say that we've been talking about this excitement, this eagerness, and it is absolutely here this morning. At 5 in the morning, everybody has been flooding this mall area, trying to reserve their spot to, be his, to see history in the making. And, of course, Kentuckians are some of these people that are getting up bright and early that are braving this cold and that are here because they say they would rather never be anywhere else than right here. And again, we've met a lot of these Kentuckians and the families that are here in Washington, D.C. And one of those families is the Kilgore family from Lexington. Let me tell you about the Kilgore family. Mom and dad came to Washington with four little kids, all under seven years old. Very brave, but these kids are sharp. And their father, Kelly Kilgore says the kids are loving their time here in Washington and all four of them are huge Obama fans. The dad says he got the kids involved in the election early and then each of their schools back home in Lexington held mock elections where the kids say they all voted for Barack Obama. One of the things that Tina and I thought were very important was that they were very involved at, at election time. Um, Austin actually went with his mom into the voting booth to vote. And then all of these children have mock elections at school, and they each voted, and they knew what uh, the people stood we for. Voted for Obama. And they voted for Obama. Obama. So here we are. And again, you're looking at a live look here on the mall here, right in Washington, D.C. And looking at our nation's capital, obviously, you're looking at some officers. They are from Maryland, and they are just part of the security detail that is here to try to make everything a little bit less chaotic. And we are covering the news live in Washington, D.C. From the LEX 18 mobile newsroom, back to you. All right, Nicole, thanks very much. And don't forget, you can catch complete coverage of today's inauguration right here on LEX 18. NBC News going to be covering the big day starting at 10.30 this morning until 4 this afternoon. After that, on our evening newscasts, Nancy Cox and Nicole Pence 
We'll be back and have more reports from our nation's capital recapping this historic inauguration. With coverage you can count on, this is LEX 18 News at 530. With live coverage of the inauguration of Barack Obama. The first African American has been sworn in as President of the United States. And that's tonight's LEX 18 Big Story at 530. Good evening and thanks for joining us at 530. I'm Kevin Christopher. History has been made and millions of people all around the world watched as Barack Obama was sworn in as our 44th president. Many Kentuckians were witnesses to the event. LEX 18's Nancy Cox and Nicole Pence were right in the middle of it all. And they're live in Washington, D.C. to begin tonight's big story at 530. Well, right now, the new president and his family are in the reviewing stand watching the parade go down Pennsylvania Avenue. Out here on the National Mall, there are still hundreds of people yeah. watching that parade on the jumbotrons, not ready to let this day end just yet. And that's really impressive, Nancy, considering most of these people have been up since 5 this morning, and it's frigid out here. As we mentioned, the temperature hovering just around 20 degrees. That just goes to show you how important this day is to so many people, including a father and son from Kentucky. Tom Fielder grew up in a whites only elementary school in Paducah. So this is amazing. When I when I went to the movies as a kid, the blacks had to go to the second balcony. They had a side entrance. He never thought he'd see an African American become president in his lifetime. Mr. Fielder, you have tears in your eyes. I what do. are you feeling? <laughs> it's just too remarkable. It's just too much. And uh, Glad to be here. Two days ago, Tom decided to fight the crowds and come to this historic inauguration because he felt his 15 year old son Graham needed to see this. We rode the subway and it took us five hours to get here from out in Virginia. Yeah, it's amazing. There's, I've never seen this many people. It's awesome. I think this guy is smart. I think he's just one of the brightest people that we've had on the scene and, and I have a lot of hope for him. He's, he's a thinker, he's an intellectual, he's, he's uh, putting a good team together and so we have a lot of hope. This is Mr. Fielding's third inauguration, and I don't think it's going to be his last. No, I don't think it will either. And there are a lot of people here who feel that same way, that they loved it today. They want to come back for more. And a lot of people we've spoken with have also said that they've been reuniting here at the inauguration. And we caught up with two brothers, one of them from Lexington, the other one from somewhere else. And they did just that. It's uh, just a great experience. It's the right man, the right time. Lexington native Alex Leroy worked for Obama's campaign. He brags he worked so hard that he convinced most of his co-workers to vote for Obama. Leroy says he's amazed at everything he's seen in Washington. I always say that America, when we, when we decide to do something, we do something really big. And we, we're just on the verge of doing something great. And you can feel it in the air, with, and whether it's, you know, the green, con, or green or economy or jobs or health care or whatever. It's going to be awesome, and I'm just so excited to see a start of it. Alex doesn't get to see his brother Andrew often, so that's why the two decided to meet here in D.C. to share in this historical experience together. We don't see a lot of each other. We're in different towns and different, moving around all the time and stuff, but uh, it's been really great to come together and uh, for this amazing event. And, uh, and uh, I, I, it's just one of those beautiful moments that you'll treasure forever. And a great story from those two brothers. And coming up at 6 o'clock, we've had several stories that are just fascinating here. All of them include Kentuckians. And at 6 o'clock, we spoke with a couple from Lexington who got a special gift today that really made their inauguration even more memorable. And you saw those incredible shots, those aerials above the mall with the more than a million people crammed in here. Well, we were right in the thick of it, as well as a lot of other folks from the bluegrass. We're covering the news live from Washington, D.C. from the LEX 18 Mobile Newsroom. Back to you. The boy was a sight to see more than a million people at the National Mall and plenty of Kentuckians among them. LEX 18's Nancy Cox and Nicole Pence are live in our nation's capital with what it was like to be there. 
what a historic day we witnessed here. Despite frigid weather all day long, early estimates put the crowd on the National Mall here at 1.4 million people. And if that is correct, that would be the largest presidential inauguration ever. So that's a huge feat in itself. It was early this morning, 930, when police shut down the mall, not allowing anyone else in. But a lot of Kentuckians managed to make it right into the middle of the madness. On the ground, the sight on the National Mall was no less impressive. Possibly millions of Americans watching the unique and peaceful transfer of power. EKU students Robert Halsell and Tina Brown couldn't believe they came this close to history. I mean, I just felt it's just a wave of change, just from the things we've always seen in history, just we've always seen a Caucasian president. And as long as you're doing your job, I don't care what race you are, but it's just something new, and I hope it just inspires other African Americans to say the truth to do. You can do whatever you want to. You can do whatever you set your mind to. It was amazing. It's a very historical moment, and I'm really happy to witness it, definitely. But beyond the excitement of the moment, a realization they're part of something much bigger. We are one. We stay together. We can't be defeated. Paul Copeland is a Western Kentucky native and retired lieutenant colonel from the Army. An African American as president. Who would ever thought it? But two, a man that can do the job. I mean, our country's in a, in a position now where we need fresh new leadership and new ideas. I think he's a man for the job. And despite those huge crowds out here, I never really felt claustrophobic or no, in I. any uncomfortable situation. Um, the only moment was when the speech was over and a lot of people wanted to get out of here. There's barriers all around, very small areas where you can exit and everybody went at once. That was a little yeah. tense, but no one got upset. No one got pushy. The attitude here has really been amazing. And it has been that idea that they are here. They witness history and they are some of the lucky ones. And actually, there's an even more interesting story out of Lexington. A couple that I ran into actually had an even better inaugural experience because of a total stranger who gave them a special gift and that made their inauguration even more memorable. I had a dream one day that uh, we'd be up here for the inauguration one day and lo and behold, we're here. Cecil Osby and his wife Eunice planned their trip to Washington a few months ago, but until this morning they thought they'd be watching Barack Obama be sworn in as president from a jumbotron in the National Mall. Instead, they got to be close to all the action. Oh, grace of God, of course, that's a blessing. She just walked up and gave them to us, asked if we would like tickets to the inauguration. She gave them to my husband. He said, yes, thank you so much. The Osbys say they'll save the tickets forever, and they'll never forget the team atmosphere they say they feel here in D.C. Just all the people being here and the unity, everyone just coming together and being so nice and courteous, it's just awesome. But again, tickets or not, really everyone felt lucky to be here on the National Mall or even up closer to the Capitol to witness history today. Indeed. We're going to be here one more time to wrap up this historic day through the eyes of Kentuckians. Hope you'll join us at 11. But for now, we are covering the news live from the nation's capital from the LEX 18 mobile newsroom. Back to you, Kevin. Nicole Pence and Nancy Cox, thank you. And just like millions all around the nation, people here in Lexington found themselves glued to the TV watching history. LEX 18's Chris Lupian has that story. <laughs> for Ellen Bond and Doris Stanford, it's a day of excitement watching the first African-American president being sworn into office. We can see Martha Luther King's dream coming true. It's on its way. And I never thought I would see it, but it's been beautiful. It's an appreciation that is special to these women who can clearly remember the days of segregation. We couldn't sit on the bus, had to sit in the back. If we went to the movies, we had to clam steps. You know, but now that all of that is clear, and I feel free. And after the party ends, the work begins by keeping up the hopeful momentum that led Barack Obama to the White House. I really believe it's going to work out. Some way down the line, it's going to work out. Covering the news in Lexington, Chris Lupian, LEX 18 News. With coverage you can count on, this is LEX 18 News at 11. With
live coverage of the inauguration of Barack Obama. From the nation's capital to the bluegrass, the inauguration of America's first African-American president is tonight's LEX 18 Big Story at 11. Good evening and thanks for joining us at 11. I'm Kevin Christopher. We'll join Nancy Cox live in Washington, D.C. in just a minute. Barack Obama's road to the White House has been largely celebratory. Now the real work of healing a country threatened by terrorists, scarred by war, and barely back from the brink of financial ruin begins. And President Obama declared that America's many challenges will be met. Steve Handelsman begins our Big Story team coverage from the White House. President Barack president hosted the first couple people who will always be able to say i was there let's go live to washington dc and join lex 18's nancy obama's parade was triumphant hundreds of thousands braving the cold for the warm thrill of applauding the charismatic new president and tonight the lucky few in furs and gowns and tuxedos toasted the first couple barack obama now the most powerful leader on the planet. I'm Steve Handelsman, NBC News, Washington. It has been a day unlike any other. And for some perspective on what it was like to be among the people who will always be able to say, I was there, let's go live to Washington, D.C. and join LEX 18's Nancy Cox and Nicole Pence. Well, good evening, Kevin, once again from the National Mall here in Washington, D.C., where this historic and grand day is finally wrapping up. The new president and his wife are attending several balls all across the city tonight. And as for all the Kentuckians that we've spoken with over the last several days, many of them have actually gone back home to the bluegrass. But we did catch up with a father and son duo to explain how their day was. And they told me that this has been the most amazing day of their lives great night. It's been fun. It's been, uh, we've made a lot of friends. Uh, there's lots of great people out here. I think uh, today in D.C. is just a good day to be here. Graham Fielder and his father Tom wanted to be here to see the first African American become president of the United States. My school wasn't integrated till I was in uh, junior high school. And so um, uh, there's always been a little guilt about that. So today was a little healing. And that was important. So many people for one cause, kind of in, in just one place. Uh, really cool, I think. But it wasn't just Barack Obama these two men wanted to see. In the celebration. It was the crowds of people around them that touched this father and son most. The faces. I, I, I took photos of individuals. And, uh, you know, sometimes it might be intrusive, but I took a lot of photos and, and uh, it was just uh, the feeling of emotion, and especially, especially with older people. But but it was the older people, the children, um, that that'll be there forever. And Tom and Graham tell me they cannot wait to share all of those photos with friends and family, and also more importantly, to share all of those photos with family members for generations to come. Someone told me tonight, you know, this is one of those events when you'll always remember where you were when Barack Obama was inaugurated as the first African American president. One Lexington man, while on a much smaller scale, he can certainly appreciate history made here today. Anthony Beatty broke some barriers himself. He was Lexington's first African-American police chief. We understand the task that's ahead for uh, Mr. Obama uh, and his family in terms of what they might have to do. Uh, much, much uh, larger scale than anything Eunice and I ever experienced in Lexington, but I understand it's very similar. So we know the tough road that's ahead. The expectations are going to be very, very high for him. There's no way I can equate this on the scale of what happened to him when he was named the first African-American police chief in Lexington. But at the same time, I had all of those same feelings and emotions. And um, so you, you feel that history of being the first and what it really means. Among their many souvenirs for the grandkids, the Beatties had tickets to the actual swearing in. But the crowds were too huge, they couldn't make it to their spot. No, we didn't, but it was still, it was very, very exciting. The entire atmosphere here is just charged. You can feel the electricity, a smile on everyone's face. 
Despite not making it all the way to the ceremony, the Beatties still appreciate the message of the moment. In America, anybody can be anything that they want to be if you do the things that you have to do to be prepared when the opportunity is presented. And the Beatties commented like we have, Nicole, about the sense of goodwill, the optimism that we felt here on these three days uh, here in Washington, D.C., the spirit of cooperation and kindness. It really has been amazing. And it hasn't faded at all. And we've been right here on the mall with these millions of people this entire time. And that energy and that enthusiasm has not gone away. It hasn't drifted and it definitely has never faded. And it has definitely been a pleasure to bring all this excitement to you back at home through the eyes of Kentuckians. For Nicole Pence, I'm Nancy Cox covering the news live in the nation's capital from the LEX 18 Mobile Newsroom. Back to you, Kevin.